Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pico Stanis. This is episode 169, season seven. Today's date is October 15th, 2022. And thank you for joining me today. Here is today's lineup for this program. Uh, I will talk about Floyd Calber. Uh, he was the anchor man in Chicago. And I will talk about my memories and his biography. Also, uh, Admiral Appliances, so that's an oldie and goodie. <laughs> I'll talk about his history of that. And then I will talk about Hubert the Harris Lion. He was the mascot for Harris Bank in Chicago. And I will talk about uh, my memories of watching uh, Hubert on television, you know, with the commercials and uh, the newspaper ads. So this will be a lot of fun. Right now, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Maxim Coffee. <laughs> and uh, this commercial is from 1977, and its logo was Swear It Perked. So when you sit back and enjoy and listen, you will understand. Okay? So I'll be right back. Thank you, everyone. Maxim tastes so close to fresh ground coffee. I swear it perked. Maxim tastes so much like fresh ground coffee that I could swear it perked. There it goes. Maxim has a rich taste so close to ground coffee, you'll swear it perks. Yours too, huh, Herb? Maxim, so close to ground you'd swear it perks. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Maxim Coffee. Uh, This was very popular in the 70s and 80s. The man that is speaking in the commercial, uh, not the announcer, uh, the announcer that's William Shallert. He was a TV actor. He was uh, best known as Martin Lane from the Patty Duke show, Patty Duke's father. But the the first man that spoke, uh, that was actor Bernie Martin. And he's best known as um, Morty Seinfeld, father of Jerry Seinfeld (laughs) on the sitcom Seinfeld. (laughs) And uh, he was in a lot of TV shows, lots of them. And uh, he did a lot of movies. And uh, he's best known, of course, of that show. And uh, believe it or not, uh, in real life, uh, Barney Martin was not Jewish. He was uh, Irish Catholic, <laughs> but he talked like, oh, like, that's funny. You know, he was a funny man. I remember he played, uh, he was on Murphy Brown. He played uh, Frank Fontana's uh, father and uh, Rosemary played uh, his wife. And uh, so he was a funny man. It's too bad. He passed away on March tw- 21st, 2005. So... As for uh, Maxim Coffee, uh, it's still made, believe it or not, but not in the United States. I think in Korea. I don't know. They just took the name. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same. Who knows? Uh, I don't remember trying it. You know, uh, you know, instant coffee. I tried Taster's Choice uh, a long time ago, but I prefer percolated. Uh, you know, I'm an old percolator. My mother has that, so. Uh, a lot of people say that's the best. It's the best coffee to drink. You know, nothing, not a Keurig. I mean, Keurig's fast, but it's not the same. Okay. At the beginning of the program, I said I will talk about uh, Floyd Calvert, the anchor man in, uh, that was in Chicago. Also, Admiral Appliances. And, of course, Hubert the Hewer- Harris Lion. Uh, before I get started, I want to talk about something personal I was too, but this is very important to me. Uh, I, I went to the urologist uh, this past Tuesday and to do a checkup, and uh, he said, your PSA went up high. This was higher than when I was first diagnosed as uh, prostate cancer. This was 8.5 when I was diagnosed with 7.5, so that is scary. I go, oh my God, don't tell me it's back. The cancer is back. Uh, he reassured me that um, 
I, I think you'll be okay, but we just want to make sure. So he sched- uh, so we scheduled a well, he scheduled that is uh, for a body scan. You know, it's like that. And so I'm going on October 24th. Uh, this will be about uh, nine days from now. Is it nine days? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> My math is bad. <laughs> and then on November 1st, I'll go for a CAT scan. So um, he he calls it a biochemical recurrence. This happens all the time where you have, a, when the, the prostate is removed or you're done with the radiation, uh, my chances are not bad, but um, it seems like the cancer returns. So it's probably teeny tiny microscopic cells, just like the before. So it's possible once the results are in, I will have to go back for radiation, uh, not surgery. I don't think so. And uh, probably, and then you'll prescribe me another medication. And they kind of hinted what it is. So it could be uh, from what I'm taking now. It, I'm taking Orgavix, so that lowers the PSA. But this, but another one will lower it as well. So that's what I'm thinking. And uh, I've been frightened and scared all week. And very depressed and it's awful, but um, I'm optimistic, but I'm a little reluctant to be, you know, because uh, I thought I was done. I was free of this, but I guess not. So a lot of people have told me, my family, my mother, my brothers, uh, my friends, um, uh, my followers on social media have told me, you know, we're, we're we're praying for you, but I think you'll be okay. I, I hope so too, because uh, I don't feel anything. I don't have any symptoms, so that's a good sign. You know, there's no blood in the urine, nothing or like that. No, I am okay. So it could be a little thing, and I hope so. But uh, the the most excruciating part for me is the waiting. I've got to wait for this test. I wish you could do it now and get it over with, but no. So with this. Uh, Body scan. I think I've done this before. They, uh, I'm going to the hospital. I would there. I will be there for four hours on the Monday, and they'll inject me with something, and then I'll just lie still and go through a machine. Like that. So I hope I'll be okay. And believe it or not, yesterday uh, my family and I ordered a pizza. <laughs> that was the biggest deal of that. That cheered me up a bit. But I was saying, I haven't had pizza in a long time. Not not when I ordered probably months. So I posted the photo on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and people went crazy, you know, and then they showed their pizzas, you know, because they ordered that. But, uh, you know, that's kind of nice. But uh, thank you everyone for your support and your prayers. And I will keep you posted on what's going on. Right now there's no news. No, not at the moment. We got to wait a week. Ugh, I hate that. <laughs> Okay, back to the fun stuff. I will talk about, right now, Admiral Appliances. And this was a very popular brand, uh, not only in Chicago, but uh, all over the country. So I'll give you a little history about that, of this uh, company. And uh, it was founded in 1934. And the man's name was Ross Siragusa. And he founded Continental Radio and Television Corporation. And that produced, uh, that was named first. And uh, he produced, uh, the electronics were radios and phonographs. Yeah. Televisions came later. And um, then he changed it to, and renamed it to the Admiral Corporation. And it was a big hit. And uh, I think it was a, uh, you know, it was very popular in the, during World War II, and then television started in the late 1940s, you know, and other uh, companies did as well, like Philco, Motorola, Zenith, you know, well, the best, <laughs> missed that. And uh, the, the Admiral Company was, this, um, you know, it was uh, advertised on the radio and also on television. And like, uh, for example, old TV shows, uh, I'm sure a lot of people right now don't remember or never heard of. Uh, that was called the Admiral Broadway Review. That started Sid Caesar. He started, he hosted your show of shows, you know, and, our, and uh, there was Lights Out, uh, 
there was Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. Remember him? He was on television. The TV show was called Life is Worth Living. That showed on Channel 9, WGN. And uh, Notre Dame football games. And then, you know, they made, uh, they were very profitable at the time, like that. And uh, their Chicago headquarters was located at 3800 West Cortland Street. So that's about Hamlin and uh, around Armitage on the west side. You know, like I think around Humble Park area. And uh, then they opened a, a second facility and that was located at 4150 North Knox Avenue. And they had like that. And uh, so they were cranking out the the radios, the clock radios, the televisions, the phonographs, and et cetera, et cetera. And they also made refrigerators, freezers, air conditioners, dehumidifiers, and uh, ranges, you know, stoves like that. So uh, that's kind of cool like that. Right now, I'm going to play a commercial of Admiral Appliances. This is a, a – the commercial is for a, a – uh, television set and a radio and this is from the early 50s so uh at the commercial play uh i'll be right back and i'll explain the the man that's speaking on that uh the spokesman for that commercial okay thank you everyone in celebration of admiral's two millionth tv jubilee here's the greatest offer in television history a beautiful Admiral radio phonograph combination worth $90 will be given to you free, yes, free of extra cost when you buy an Admiral TV console. Your choice of many cabinet styles, all with 17 or 20 inch rectangular dynary tube for the clearest picture in television. And when you buy, you get this free, an Admiral triple play radio phonograph that plays all records regardless of size or speed. Here's complete home entertainment for the price of television alone. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Admiral Television. Uh, the, the spokesman, that was George Fenneman. Fenneman I can't pronounce his name. Uh, he was the uh, host of, well, not the host. He was the uh, announcer and uh, um, the partner of Groucho Marx on the old uh, quiz show, You Bet Your Life. And I used to watch the show in the 70s when reruns uh, appeared on WFLD TV, Channel 32, late at night. And that's where I found the sh- uh, discovered the show. And it was uh, it was funny. Uh, I love that show. I bought the the DV, two DVDs uh, a long time ago, and I watched all of them, and it's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, it still holds up <laughs> like that. As for Admiral TV, um, uh, the company called Rockwell International acquired the company in 1973, and they sold the appliances to Magic Chef. Remember that? Uh, it's still around, a magic chef. And then it was later sold to Maytag. And then it was acquired by Whirl- Whirlpool. Back and forth, back and forth, like that. And uh, let's see. And there was, uh, so I remember the commercials and they play like that. Uh, believe it or not, my family never owned an appliance from that company. Mm, not that I remember. Uh, we had Zenith or... Motorola in our house, you know, for televisions and radios and clock radios. And uh, right now, I don't know if the uh, the brand is still around because I haven't seen it. So if you do a search online or do Google search or check on Amazon, maybe it is. But it's not like, like before because this was a Chicago-based uh, company which a lot of them were, and it's a shame because, uh, and that was uh, good. So um, let's see. So uh, like I said before, I never, I never owned uh, the, um, any uh, appliances from Admiral, 
you know, I'm sorry I'm stuttering like that. <laughs> I'm just nervous. <laughs> There's something I want to look up first. And uh, I think because I did like a radar. Uh, let's see, uh, it was an Amaral radar range, I think. I don't know. No, I don't think so. No, forget about it. No, it was an Amana. I'm sorry, Amana. So I got confused with Amana and Admiral. So they're two different companies. Okay, never mind. Okay, that is it for Admiral Appliances. Right now, I'm going to talk about Floyd Calvert. Ugh. You know, I miss this man. I really do. He was wonderful. And uh, I'll tell you a story about him. Um, when my mother arrived in uh, from Greece in, in 1962, which was 60 years ago uh, last month, and she got married in, um, in July. And then, uh, but my father lived here 10 years prior. So I went back, went to Greece and got married and, and brought my mom here. And my mom was all alone. She had no family and all that. And she was so frightened. And one, of, and then she started watching television. And uh, one of the f uh, first TV shows she watched was Password, a game show that hosted Hal in London. And that's how she learned English. Someone suggested that to her, a friend of hers. Why don't you watch that? And she did. And she learned that. And then she started watching the news. And uh, two people she really remember, well, actually three, uh, from the news that she still remembers to this day were Harry Volkman. He did the weather. She thought it was she was crazy about him. Also, there was P.J. Hoff. He did the weather. You don't know, remember with the pictures of the map and all that. And all, and then there was Floyd Calber. She remember watching him. Uh, I don't think she remember any other news anchor. I think just him. So Floyd Calber started uh, doing the news on WNBQ TV Channel Five. It was that was the call letters then. Then they changed it to, in 1964 to WMAQ. And that's when she first watched him, and that's when he first started. Okay. And, uh, you know, he was not born in Chicago. He was born in Omaha, Nebraska, and he served in the Army. And then he began his TV career in Omaha. And then um, then he got hired in Chicago, you know. And uh, I think uh, he, he was on 10 o'clock. I believe I don't. I don't think any. Not like today, like five. You know, four, five, six, seven. You know, something like that. Not seven o'clock. <laughs> Forget that. But then he anchored the news at ten o'clock at night every night, uh, probably Monday through Friday, and it was uh, it was called the NBC News uh, NBC News Night Report. You know, and. Uh, you know, he was very handsome, well-dressed, and he had that voice, you know, and he sounded like uh, very down-to-earth, you know. And uh, from what I've heard from one of the sources, a lot of women were crazy about him because he, was, he looked like a movie star, <laughs> like that. And uh, also, in, starting in the late 60s, he began to do five-minute news digest in the early and afternoon slot. So just like today, you know, like a... Uh, like a uh, news brief. I remember Channel 7 did that in the 70s and 80s. Uh, like that was, that's still done to the day, like that. And uh, then they changed the format on Channel 5, and then they did uh, News Center 5. And he was paired with Jane Pauley. And uh, that didn't work out well. No. It was you, the chemistry was kind of weird, awkward, and I don't know. I don't know how he felt about her. I don't know, but uh, I don't know. Maybe he, he. I think he wanted to be solo. He, he didn't want to do. The, he didn't want a co-anchor. But today it's acceptable. It's been like that for years. So, and uh, that happened in 1975, and uh, and then. Uh, then Jane Pauley left, uh, and then and became the co-anchor for the Today Show, and she's been there for years until Deborah Nor Norville came in the late '80s, and that was controversial. And uh, let's see, and then uh, then Floyd Calvert uh, left in 
Uh, let's see, when did he leave? I'm not sure exactly when he left, but I'll find out. Anyway, so right now I'm going to play a news clip. Uh, this is a clip. I found this on YouTube. And uh, this is from February 23rd, 1967. This is at the beginning of the newscast. And uh, th- he discusses about uh, the snowstorm. This is not the big, this, we had the big one in January, late January in 1967, but there was another one, but not as severe as the one, you know, like the blizzard. So here's Floyd Calvert anchoring the news on WMQ TV Channel 5. So sit back and enjoy, everyone. Thank you. The next two hours and one half are in living color on Channel 5. (laughs) Good evening. Another snowstorm caught Chicago by the surprise this evening. Four inches of snow fell within one hour in some of the northwestern suburbs. Uh, The depth of more than five inches is common at the moment. But NBC weather forecaster Harry Volkman says the worst is now over. Chicago's trains and buses are operating nearly on schedule. O'Hare Airport closed at 6 o'clock, but resumed partial operation about a half an hour ago. Heavy winds are drifting some highways closed. Visibility is poor. Various reports indicate dozens of cars stalled on the expressways, and officials request emergency travel only on expressways at least until midnight. Snow removal crews are working, and part of the outer drive is closed now for snow removal. Interstate 90, U.S. 30, and U.S. 41 are closed in northwest Indiana. School closings, if any, will be announced tomorrow morning on WMAQ Radio. The city of Chicago warned a few moments ago that all cars that are stalled now that are not moved from major streets and bus routes immediately will be towed away. During tonight's storm, a CTA elevated train traveling at about 10 miles an hour hit the rear Another train at the Central Park station on the west side. Three persons suffered minor injuries. The CTA says that it hopes to have normal service tomorrow morning. Harry Volkman will have more on the weather later. This is the NBC News Night Report with Floyd Calvert. This portion presented in part by American Airlines. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed uh, Floyd Calvert doing the news. Oh, that takes me back. That was wonderful. You know, and uh, he did the news on Channel 5. It started in 1962 and all the way to the 70s. And uh, let me clarify something. Uh, Floyd Calvert left Channel 5 in WMQ in 1976. And he went to an- to be the news anchor for the Today Show in New York. And Jane Pauley joined him six months later. And uh, that was kind of, so I, maybe they got along, maybe they did. I don't know. You know I don't remember seeing much of them in the morning uh, because I was at school. So I didn't see that. And uh, the shows I watched uh, when I was a kid were, of course, Ray Rayner, Garfield Goose, you know, Bozo. I didn't watch the news. And uh, I heard he was, uh, from according to some sources, he was miserable. He didn't like it there at all. I wonder, I don't know why, you know, but uh, he probably got a great offer, you know, good, a you know, nice contract, you know, and uh, some good incentives, but Sometimes the job isn't worth like that. I think he missed Chicago. I think he did. And uh, so in 1979, he left the show, the uh, Today Show, and then he worked for as a network correspondent. And just for, he did it for a couple of years. And then he quit. And then he retired. And then he moved. And then he lived in Connecticut. You know, he was on the East Coast like that. Then um, out of the blue... Five years later, he got a call from channel, WLS channel, uh, TV Channel 7. And, they, and uh, the guy in charge of that, his name was Dennis Swanson, and he offered Caliber the job of anchoring at 6 o'clock. And uh, he accepted. 
And uh, I guess he missed, he didn't like being retired. He missed working and he missed Chicago. So he grabbed it, he grabbed that opportunity. So he moved back and then he started watching news. And I remember watching it and I go, oh, this feels like home again. This is wonderful. And he's, I think he said that, you know, and uh, he was planning just to stay um, uh, probably for a couple of years, but no, he, he stayed for a long time. And then until 19, and then in 1983, uh, he was he was a solo anchor for six o'clock, but then he was paired again with another woman, and it was Kathy Brock, and uh, she she's she's very lovely, you know, and everything went fine with them, you know, I think so, and uh, and then of course she retired about a couple of years ago, you know, from Channel Seven. Now, I hope she's doing well, and. Uh, then he uh, retired uh, on February 27, 1998. So he was there for about uh, 14 years, you know, for a long time. And uh, I remember one newscast he did. He was, uh, this was towards the end of the newscast, and he was reading something and he found it hilarious. <laughs> he kept chuckling and it's like that. I don't know what, I forgot what it was about. And that, you know, it was something silly like that. Then when the news was over and and then, you know, when the camera pulls away and then he just took some papers and he just threw it up in the air. <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. I love that. So uh, you get the real Floyd Calvert there like that. But, uh, you know... Off camera, he was a very nice man. And, uh, he was funny, great sense of humor, and uh, and a family man. And he loved golf, you know, and had to pass the time. And uh, let's see. So uh, let's see, when did he pass away? So he passed away on May 13th, 20, 2004. He had FNCMA. You know, he smoked, uh, like most newscasts like that. And uh, that was sad. I remember. I remember when they announced his death on television. But uh, he's still remembered by most people, you know. And uh, also, uh, the funny uh, here, the funny thing about him is that he had a nickname, and uh, his nickname was the Big Tuna, and. Uh, it was inspired by of uh, that mob boss in Chicago, you know, Tony Big Tuna Accardo. <laughs> and uh, I don't know who, uh, I don't know if he named himself that or his colleagues, could be either. They called him the Big Tuna, you know. And then when I posted a picture of him yesterday on my social media accounts, right away people said, here's the Big Tuna, like that. So... That's a shame. He's a wonderful. He was a wonderful man. I I liked him a lot. And uh, right before I started uh, doing the broadcast, you know, for the podcast, I noticed that people tag their kids or grandchildren that I'm going to talk about that. I hope they listen. So I hope they did. But I hope I did a good job, you know, telling about you know their father or their grandfather. Let's see. Okay. Next up, we talk about Hubert the Harris Lion. Ah, this is one of the most recognizable mascots in the Chicago area. And uh, I'll give you a little history about him. Uh, he was introduced uh, from the Harris Bank in the late 1950s. And about uh, Harris Bank, uh, let me give a little history about that bank. And uh, that was established in 1882, and the man's name was N.W. Harris. I think that's his name. <laughs> like that. And uh, no, that's the company. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> yeah, like this. And uh, let's see what else. So, no, the founder's name was Norman Walt Harris. That's where the N.W. came from. 
And then uh, they keep changing names. And it was uh, Harris Bank and Harris Trust and Savings Bank. That was from 1907 to 1972. And then uh, they changed it again from Harris Bank N.A. Uh, because of the then it changed to BO, BMO Harris. And that is uh, that was a bank from Montreal, Canada. And they bought that in 1972. And uh, they named that. No, I'm sorry. The Bank of Montreal, they acquired Harris in 1984. Uh, forgive me for that. And that's been like that ever since you know it's bmo harris but i always thought of harris bank a lot of uh, most people have accounts there they call it that and uh still in business their headquarters is still downtown and uh then like i said before in the er in the early 60s they had the mascot and it was hubert the harris lion and uh he started using that character and uh, it was created by the Leo Burnett Company. They did that. And uh, the voice of Harry, uh, he debuted in, I'm sorry, I'll get back to the voice. Uh, he he made his debut on TV in 1962, same year as Floyd Calvert did. And he appeared in like animated 20 second spots and all during the, all during that time, you know, when, when you were watching television. And uh, he was very recognizable for that. And the voice of Hubert was actor Frank Nelson. You may remember him from, he was a radio actor and from the Jack Benny show and also Sanford and some, you know, when someone wanted to talk to him or ask him, he go, yes. <laughs> it's hilarious. I love that man. He's so funny. <laughs> So he did the voice of uh, Hubert. Okay. Then merchandise came. And uh, mer uh, the merchandise, uh, for example, they were uh, ceramic cookie jars, uh, banks. Like uh, I posted a, uh, a picture of a bank from Harris, uh, from Harris Bank. This was given to me a friend, by a friend of my mom's because she was moving at the time in the 70s. And... Uh, she, and then she asked me, "Do you want it? Do uh, you want the bank?" And I and she said yes. And then she gave it to me. So I've had this since uh, for many years, and I still have. I would never get get rid of it. No way. I mean, this is this is a beautiful thing. And he also made uh, clocks and bath mats, and of course, uh, let's see what else, other things, I guess. But the most thing, the most um, item of Hubert, the uh, Harris Lion, uh, that was a doll. And it was the Hubert doll. And that became very popular. They were small, big, and they were cuddly and soft, you know. And uh, Hubert uh, looked like a regular lion, and he wore glasses with no, uh, you know, you know, it's like those, uh, I don't know what they're called, like frameless. No, not frameless, but uh, you didn't put frames around your ears. So I don't know what those uh, glasses are called. And he carried an umbrella. And uh, let's see. So the commercials, uh, you know, at the end of the commercials, I forgot what he was saying. You know, like that. Oh, oh, I had a brain for it. <laughs> like that. And uh, so I remember the commercials very well from the 1970s. And. And at the end of the commercial, Frank Nelson would say, you should have a Harris banker, you know, with that type. And it was just for a second. And that, that statement, that saying, stuck in everyone's minds, you know, forever, or, or in Chicago. So that's one of a classic saying, you know, like with Bouchelle rugs or, you know, with uh, Empire carpeting, <laughs> like that. But right now, uh, I'm going to play a commercial for uh, for the Huber doll for Harris Bank, and the little boy that's speaking is Gary Coleman, you know, the actor from Different Strokes. And so, after I play the commercial, I will talk about uh, the Huber doll and Gary Coleman a little bit. 
So sit back and enjoy it. And I think you would love this commercial because it, it takes you back to a wonder to a beautiful time. It really does. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Well, it's that time of the year when you can get a Hubert doll at the Harris Bank. Just open a savings account with $200 or more. Or add $200 to a savings account you already have. If you got a Hubert doll in past years, get another one. You know, you can never have too many Hubert dolls, because <laughs> you can never save too much money. You should have a Harris Banker. You should have a Hubert doll. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercials for Harris Bank with Jerry Coleman with a Hubert doll. And uh, you heard at the end, uh, you should get a Harris Banker. And then Gary Coleman would say, you should get a Hubert doll. I remember another commercial he did. Uh, you can find him on YouTube. Uh, this is courtesy of Rick Klein from Fuzzy TV Memory, Fuzzy TV, excuse me, FuzzyMemories.tv. Uh, you can find him on YouTube. He's got a lot of commercials from Chicago, a lot of uh, videos. Uh, so thank you, Rick. Um, so that's a classic, you know, because a lot of people associate Gary Coleman with different strokes, uh, but also he, they remember him from the commercials for the Hubert doll. Uh, for Gary Coleman, you know, he was, uh, he's from Chicago, uh, actually in Zion, Illinois, you know, and, uh, then he did, uh, Let's see. So he began his career. I think he began his career in that commercial for Harris Bank. He did that. Then he appeared in te television shows, and then he got cast as Arnold Jackson for Different Strokes, and that ran for eight years, and that was a very popular show. And he was funny in that, and he was cute and adorable. But I remember him a couple episodes from Good Times. You know, TV show, and he played a brat. He was a terrible child. <laughs> and uh, I remember one time uh, they were trying to, I think uh, Florida, uh, played by Esther Rowe, wanted to get a job as a school bus driver. But there was like some political uh, interference. And uh, the alderman, I forget his name, um, Alderman Davis, or they call him Balderman Davis because he was bald, wanted to hire somebody else, you know, for the job. You know, that's how it is with politics. And then uh, Gary Coleman enters the room and then uh, he gave that lady a hard time, you know, and uh, because she had no, ex the lady that's applying for the job, she had no experience with kids or being a, a bus driver. So, uh, Gary Coleman gave her a hard time, you know, and then they were, I don't know, kind of struggling, and he, he pulled her wig out. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> you know, and uh, he would talk back to people, but when he talked back to uh, Florida, you know, she was gave a mean look to him. He backed down, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was wonderful that. Yeah. And then, you know, he made some movies and then uh, unfortunately he passed away May 20, 28, 2010. You know, he was uh, 42. That's a shame. Oh, that's terrible. He was talented. I liked him, you know, but he had a rough life because uh, he had a problem with his kidneys and all that. So, and then because he didn't grow, he was like the same height like that. And uh, a lot of people saw he was a kid, but he was an adult. <laughs> yeah. So that was rough like that. Okay. So that'll be the end of this program. Um, yeah, before I, I want to mention one more thing. You know, for Harris Bank, um, the bank is still around, but it's BOMO Harris. Uh, you still see the commercials on television. As for Hubert, the, the Harris Lion, uh, I don't know if the mascot's still around. I haven't seen him. Maybe he is. I don't know. But I've uh, read somewhere that he, you do see him sometimes at sporting events, like basketball, like that. And uh, maybe still used. But as for commercials on television, no. 
no. But I, I'm sure he did radio commercials back then, but they, but he was famous for the television commercials. And that started in the 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, that's the that's when he was the most memorable. And uh, people still talk about him from this day. And when I posted the picture of the bank, you know, the Cermak Bank of Hubert, a lot of people remembered it. They loved it. And they show they uploaded photos of their dolls, their clocks, and the banks. Oh, that's beautiful. That really is. So he, he's a lovable guy. <laughs> okay. All right. So that'll be all for this show. Uh, I'll do you a quick recap. Uh, I talked about the I talked about the Floyd Calber, the anchorman, also Admiral Appliances in Chicago, and of course. Hubert the Harris Lion from Harris Bank in Chicago. Oh, that was a fun episode. Uh, I will probably do another episode on Tuesday, uh, probably. And uh, once this episode, which is 169 of Vanish Online Stories, it will be uploaded and uh, on whatever podcasts are av- available, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Breaker, Overcast, wherever. Uh, you can also, it'll also be posted on my YouTube channel, Fantasy Chicago Land Stories. So just be on the lookout. That would be uh, ready in about this afternoon. And uh, I will do another podcast, my other podcast, TV Oblivion, tomorrow. I'll get that ready. You know, I'll get that set up uh, today, this, later this afternoon. Okay. So this is your, this is, this is your host, Pika Stanis, for Vash Collins Stories. Thank you for listening to me. I had a good time. And uh, we'll see you soon. And here is Ray Rayner saying bye-bye for uh, bye-bye-bye. And here's bye-bye for me. So everyone take care and so long. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye.